with me to the book of 2 Peter chapter number 3. 2 Peter chapter number 3. And uh, praise the Lord. 2 Peter chapter number 3. It's interesting. We're going to look at the last two verses of the chapter. Remember, there's 1 Peter and there is 2 Peter. And in 2 Peter, there's three chapters. We're going to look at verses 17 and 18. By the way, my son Amos, Amos is now three and a half weeks old. And uh, little baby Amos, he's, he's been a good baby, but old baby Amos, he likes to eat. And he likes to eat. Recently, the last few nights, he'll eat and eat and eat and eat. And next thing you know, he'll go, go to bed, he'll sleep for a little bit, but he'll wake up and he'll think he's hungry, so he'll want to eat some more. And he'll eat some more. And man, yesterday, I was looking at baby Amos, and there he was. His belly was sticking way out, and he's so much bigger uh, than he was just a few weeks ago. Uh, little baby Amos has grown, and it's important. That's natural. It's normal for a child to grow. In these two verses here in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 17, 18, you'll notice the word grow. Now let's read these verses. They're all together. 2 Peter chapter 3, starting in verse number 17, if you'll read along with me. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But, notice this, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. And you'll notice that, but grow, but grow. And as we look back, in a few minutes, we're going to look back over 1 Peter and 2 Peter. And you'll notice there's a lot of problems in 1 Peter. There's a lot of problems for the, the saved folks in 2 Peter. And these verses sum it up. Beware, and then you'll say, just grow. And that's the title of the message this morning, Just Grow. Grow. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we love you so much. And I'm thankful for everybody here this morning, both here in person and watching online. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, for allowing us to have church, allowing us to have your word. And Lord, I pray that you help somebody, maybe struggling this morning, to see that there is a battle. There is an enemy without, there is an enemy within, but the answer is just to grow. And Lord, I pray that you bless this service. We need you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, you know, the Bible is a wonderful book. It's God's book. It's God's word. It's not a, a book of opinions, a book of fact uh, given us straight from the almighty God. Now, 1 Peter, if you were to read 1 Peter, uh, and remember, uh, Peter, one of the apostles, he'd been the apostle who uh, walked on water, the apostle who cut off Malchus's ear, uh, the apostle who denied Christ, the apostle who had forgive, been forgiven, the apostle who preached at Pentecost, the apostle who led uh, a big influence on the church there in Jerusalem, the apostle Peter eventually wrote these epistles, 1 Peter and 2 Peter. The book of 1 Peter, it's a, a short book, but it's a book about the enemy without. And you think about a church, the church that he was given this epistle to, he was mentioning to them, there is an enemy without. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, it says that the trial of your faith. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 12, it says, the Gentiles that, whereas they speak against you as evildoers. And then it mentions a little bit later, Christ's suffering, and mentions that you're going to suffer also. And in 1 Peter, there is an enemy without. For example, at that period of time, in the Roman, uh, the, Roman, um, the, the Roman Empire was governed by Nero. And if you ever heard of Nero, Nero in the year 64 AD, it seems like he set a fire to the city of Rome. And then he blamed it on the Christians and great persecution happened against the churches that were in the Roman Empire. And uh, blaming on the Christians, they would take Christians and they would crucify Christians. They would take and they would hunt down Christians. They would put coats of skin around Christians and tie them where uh, they couldn't, uh, they would wet them and then tie them around them. Then 
as the skins dried, it uh, eventually suffocated those Christians. He would take and set fire to Christians and light up his garden. There was great persecution uh, against the church from without. But also, if you go to 2 Peter, 2 Peter is an amazing book. It speaks of persecution or an enemy, not from without, but an enemy to God's people from within. And you read this, and it uh, talks about in 2 Peter chapter 2, especially, it says, we have, uh, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them. And he's speaking, Peter's warning and saying, hey, there's an enemy within the church. By the way, there is an enemy without the church. The devil is that roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. And there is an enemy in the church. It says, many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And he's saying, hey, there's going to come a time when uh, inside the church that uh, the enemy begins to speak evil of good and tries to take good and make it evil and evil good. And it says, these are wells without water. In chapter 2, verse 18, it says, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flat flesh. And these enemies within the church, they're wells that have no, they look good, but they're wells that don't have any water. They speak great swelling words, but they allure through the lusts of the flesh. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. Now, if you fast forward with me and look at 2 Peter chapter 3 and look at verse number 17. Look at verse number 17 with me. Remember, there's an enemy without and there's also an enemy within. In verse 17 it says, Ye therefore, beloved brethren, seeing ye know these things, these things, there's an enemy without. Ye know these things, there's an enemy within. Seeing ye know these things before, then it says, Beware! Beware! Hey, watch out! Open your eyes! There is an enemy. There is an enemy without. There's an enemy within. Beware! Now imagine with me the church members listening to Peter. They're almost nodding their head. They're saying, yeah, there is an enemy without. And they can see Nero. They can see the, the persecution against the church. Uh, it's pretty scary. They can see inside the church where there's been some difficulties. People coming in and trying to go away from the Bible into their own opinions. And you can almost see them saying, what are we going to do? There is an enemy without. There is an enemy within. And Peter understood the problems. Uh, you remember in uh, Peter, in Acts chapter 12, he, he knew that there was a persecution against the church from without. Do you remember they took the pastor of the church of Jerusalem, James, and killed him? And then they took Peter and they captured him and put him into prison. They were going to kill him, but God uh, did a mighty miracle. And Peter had been witnessed that. He'd also had, uh, had witnessed an enemy from within. In Acts chapter 15, the Jerusalem council, people had come in and began to bring in damnable heresies. They began to change the, the gospel into a lie, and there was an enemy within the church. And so Peter understood this, and seeing ye know these things, beware, beware. Can I just say, it's not much different today. We as a church have an enemy without. There is certainly an enemy without the church and uh, society. Uh, we have a society that is adamantly against the Word of God. We have a society that is adamantly against you coming to church this morning. We have a society that is adamantly against the preaching of God's Word. We have a society that is adamantly against you believing in the beginning God. We have a society that's adamantly against teaching the, uh, that God created everything in six literal days. We have a society that's adamantly against you raising your family for the Lord. We have a society that's adamantly against Bible-believing Christianity. There is certainly an enemy without. You think about it. Uh, we see that in so many different ways. We see it in political correctness. Political correctness. We are uh, pressured by society to be politically correct. And you think about it. For, for example, uh, a football player last week, he got up and he says, I believe we ought to stand for the flag of the United States. Okay. And, and so for the next week, 
He has been criticized. I didn't hear one thing that said he did, a, did right by standing up and saying, hey, I'm proud to be an American. I'm proud to live in America. But, you know, you think about that. He was not politically correct, and the world tried to crucify him for it. Can I just say, I'm thankful I live in the United States. I'm thankful that I have the freedom to believe the Bible. I have the freedom to assemble and go to church. I have the freedom to read and lead my family to believe the, Bi uh, the Bible. A man that came this morning was talking about a friend of his who did work in China. And when he went into China, they, they would not allow him to bring a Bible into China. And they even, they wouldn't let him in the country of China without taking his Bible app off his phone. I don't want to live in China. I don't want to live in Russia. I want to live in the United States where I have the freedom to assemble and live for God. And by the way, there is an enemy that's without that would like to take away those freedoms. There's an enemy without. Political correctness. I remember not too long ago here in Virginia, we had an amendment, the marriage amendment, where we, we were going to vote on what marriage was, and we believed marriage was between one man and one woman. And uh, why we have to vote on that, I don't know, uh, but we did. And so I put a bumper sticker on the back of my car that said, I believe marriage is between a man and a woman. Somebody took a rock and threw it through the back, of my, uh, the back of my suburban window and then put a sign in my yard letting me know that they were not excited about me believing that. There's pressure on you and pressure on me from without. But by the way, there was pressure on the churches back in the time of Peter, a pressure or an enemy from without. But there's also an enemy from within, an attack, by the way, on the gospel. There's an enemy of our church within. And it's, it's interesting, false doctrines fleshly Christianity, health and wealth gospel, worldly Christianity, corrupt Bibles. I remember uh, a few men coming to church here, walking in those doors, and they began to, within the church, pass out these booklets to everybody they could. And after the church, I stopped there. I said, what are you doing? Let me talk to you. And we began to talk. They didn't believe Jesus is God. They believed in different ways to heaven. And I said to them, I said, out, get out. <laughs> but they were an enemy that was trying to get into the church. This is pretty scary. Enemies without, enemies within. And you and I, we see it every day of our life. Hey, Bible-believing Christianity is not necessarily popular in the world, and there's an attack on it, and there's an enemy. So this leads to this. So what should we do? And Peter's writing to the church. He's telling them exactly what to do. Look back with me at verse number 18. This is awesome. It's wonderful. Second, Second Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Here's the answer. But grow in grace. But grow in grace. Now, this seems simple. It is simple, but I think it's going to help many of you this morning once you, the light bulb turns on. He's looking at him and saying, the answer is for you to just grow. Imagine with me, them listening to Peter, and all of a sudden saying, hey, beware, there's an enemy without. Beware, there's an enemy win. And they begin to say, what should we do? And some of them almost says, well, the answer, if, if I was just Peter, if I was just Peter, I could handle the enemy without, and I could handle the enemy win. And you can see Peter say, no. Hey, being Peter's not the answer. The answer is just to grow. Well, well, I, you know, the enemy without, the enemy within. If I was the apostle Paul, I could handle, because I, I see how Paul uh, suffered persecution and kept on going. If I was just Paul, Peter's saying, no, the answer is not to be Paul. Hey, you want to be who you are, but the answer is just grow. Well, if I was one of the sons of Zebedee, maybe James or John, no, the answer is not being James or John. The answer is being you, but the answer is just grow. Hey, remember Stephen, how he took and was uh, persecuted, stones were thrown at him, and how he had a peace that passed all understanding? Well, if I was just Stephen, no, the answer is not to be Stephen. The answer is just grow. Be yourself, but just grow. Just grow. Well, Pastor these are rough times. It's difficult. It's 2020. The world has gone crazy. Uh, it's not popular being a Bible believer. I don't think I can handle it. But if, if I was you, Pastor Matt, and at a time, I could handle it. 
Yowzers, you're in big trouble. The answer is not to be Pastor Matt Nettesheim. The answer is just grow. Hey, well, if I was Mike Nolan or Randy McMain, my problems would be over. No, just grow. You don't want to be Brother Mike Nolan. You don't want to be Brother Randy. You don't want to be Pastor Nettesheim. You want to be who you God has made you. The answer is just grow. One of you ladies said, well, I could handle it. Uh, all the pressure on the ladies uh, in the world today. If I was just Mrs. Nettesheim. No, the answer is not to be Mrs. Nettesheim. The answer is just grow. Well, if I was Dwayne Rash or Mrs. Gray or uh, Candace Nolan or Charlie Stallings or Chris Faulkner, uh, all my problems would be over. No, the answer is not to be somebody else. The answer is just grow. Just grow. Hey, Peter tells them that they need to realize they don't need to be somebody else. Don't worry about trying to be somebody else. Hey, God made you who you are. He loves you. He cares for you. You're precious in the sight of the God. The answer for you, the answer is for me, is not to be somebody else. The answer is to just grow, just grow, just grow. It's interesting. At our church, we have young people. We have young people. And I'm thankful for our young people. And can I say we need the young people at our church. You young people, if you're not careful, you'll say, well, I wish I was a little bit older. I wish I was this. No, be the young person. Just grow. Just grow. Hey, I I'm old. And by the way, praise God for our senior uh, uh, saints at the church. And the answer is not to be somebody else. We love the seniors in our church. But the answer for the seniors is the same. Just grow. Just grow. Well, uh, you, you think about this. There's some poor people at our church. Hey, the answer is not to be rich. We love the poor people of our church. And the answer is, hey, uh, God loves you. Just grow. Just grow. We have some rich people. Well, maybe we don't have rich people at our church. But if you are and you're rich here, we need you. We love you. Hey, but the answer is not to be something else. Hey, just grow. Hey, we have black people at our church. And I say pray. White. It's not to be Hispanic. It's not to be Filipino. Just grow. We have white people at our church. The answer is not to be black. It's not to be a different race. Hey, the answer is just grow. We have Filipinos at our church. The answer is not to be a different race. It's to be a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just grow. Just grow. Praise God for somebody who's been saved 50 years. Praise God, but continue to just grow. Some people have been saved just for a few weeks. Hey, the answer is just grow. Just grow. I want to beg and plead with you. There are some here today that really think their answers to their problems is to be somebody else. If I was so-and-so, if I had so-and-so's family, if I had so-and-so's wife, if I had so-and-so's husband, if I had so-and-so's job, and your answers is trying to live somebody else's life that God didn't give you. That's not the answer. The enemy without, the enemy within. The answer is just grow, just grow, just grow. There's an enemy without, there's an enemy within. Hey, some people this month, the month of July, are reading their Bible from cover to cover. In the month, one month, there's several people in our church that are reading the whole entire Bible from cover to cover. By the way, that's interesting. But listen, that's not for everybody right now. And the answer is not to be that person that's doing that. The answer is to be who you are, what God wants you to be, and just grow, just grow. Hey, some people have been tithing faithfully for years. It's uh, easy for them. Hey, listen, don't worry about what they're doing. Worry about what you're doing. Just grow, just grow. Some people have been prayful prayer warriors for year after year after year. It's easy for them to pray. They wake up praying. They walk and they pray. And you look at that and it's almost intimidating. You say, if I could just be like that. No, don't worry about being like that. Just grow. Take a step forward. Hey, live for the Lord. Some of the people have gotten rid of the, by the way, many people have gotten rid of their bad music and uh, their bad movies and thrown it in the trash and praise God for that. But wherever you're at right now, hey, just grow. Take a step closer to the Lord than you were yesterday. Don't try to live somebody else's life. Live the life that God has given you. By the way, in our, in our church, there are some teaching the Bible and they teach the Bible. They seem to know it like the back of their hands and, and you're not there yet. Uh, if, if I was Brother Randy, if I was Brother Jay Hudson, no, the answer is not to be Brother Randy. The answer is not to be Brother Jay Hudson. The answer is to be you and just grow. You're not there yet, yet, but just grow and learn the Word of God. Hey, some are faithful to church. 
Praise God for the folks that come Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. They never miss. Praise God. If I was just like Brother Ryan Hatfield or Sister and Brother Schwabe, no, that's not the answer. You're different. And listen, it's important wherever you're at, just grow. Just grow. Maybe you've never come on a Sunday night. Hey, take a step into the water and just grow in that area. You're not there yet, but you're heading in the right direction. Some are, are good soul winners. They've been soul winning for years. And you look at them and it's so intimidating. They tell people about Jesus all the time. He said, if I was brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so. No, the answer is not. Just grow in that area. It's not the answer. You're not there, but you're not there yet. But you're heading the right direction. The answer is just to grow. By the way, some of the ladies in our church. Boy, it's intimidating being a lady that loves the Lord in 2020. And by the way, some of the ladies in our church... They've learned to dress modestly. They wear dresses and shirts, uh, skirts because they love God. And they wear them not just to church, but they wear them out and about. Praise God. And I say thank God for sisters who believe in gender distinction. Praise God for you sisters who dress modestly. And some of you say, well, if I was sister so-and-so, I'd do the same thing. Well, you're not sister so-and-so. You weren't meant to be sister so-and-so. The answer is not to be sister so-and-so. The answer is to grow. You're not there yet, but you're going the right direction. Praise God. Just grow. Just grow. Just grow. By the way, my children are different. I made a list. I needed a list. I have Jonathan, Benjamin, Andrea, Matthew, Joseph, Levi, Joshua, Daniel, Anna Joy, Samuel, Nehemiah, and Amos. Woo! I needed that list. Didn't want to leave any out. But, but John and Ben and Andrea and Matthew, they're all different. The answer for John is not to be Benjamin. The answer is for him to be John and grow. The answer for Benjamin is not to be John. Hey, they're different. The answer for Benjamin is to be Benjamin and grow. The answer for Matthew is not to be Joseph, but Matthew to be Matthew and grow. The answer for baby Amos is not to be his big brother Jonathan. The answer is for him to be uh, Amos and grow. The answer is just grow. Beg and plead with you. God loves you so very much. He's got a special plan for each and every one of us here this morning. And he loves you. Don't try to be somebody else. Be who God made you to be. By the way, he says, come unto me all ye that labor and heavy laden and I will give you rest. In other words, he is a, wants a relationship with you. Look back over at 1 Peter chapter 2 with me. Go to 1 Peter chapter 2 with me. Because you get to this point, just grow, just grow, just grow. Uh, there is an enemy without, there is an enemy within, and if the answer is just grow, how do I grow? I'm glad you asked. How do you grow? Look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. It says, as newborn babes... Desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may what? Grow thereby. How, how do you grow? I want to grow. How do you grow? With the sincere milk of the word. How do you grow? Through the word of the living God, the Bible, the King James Bible. And by the way, it says you ought to desire the sincere milk of the word. Hey, you ought to read the Bible. Can I ask you a question? How, how's your Bible reading been in the last week? Are you growing in your Bible reading? Uh, do you have plans for this next week of reading your Bible? Have you learned to desire the sincere milk of the Word? Now, I'm not saying reading the whole Bible from cover to cover or the New Testament has nothing to do with that. But are you growing in that desire of the sincere milk of the Word? My daughter, Anna Joy, seven years old, last night, uh, she came into my office, time for bed, and she said, Dad, would you tuck me in? I said, of course, I'll tuck you in. And she says, Dad, would you read to me before I go to bed? And I said, of course. And she says, I want you to read the Bible to me, Daddy. I said, okay. And so a couple minutes later, I went into her bedroom, and uh, she was sitting there. She had her Bible. And uh, I began to open up the Bible to the book of Psalms. And she says, no, Daddy, go to the book of Genesis. I want you to read the whole Bible to me. <laughs> Now, lofty goals, I don't think she's meant the whole Bible to her that night. But you know what's interesting is a seven-year-old, she had a desire for the sincere milk of the Word. And you know what? As a seven-year-old who has a desire for the sincere milk of the Word, she is going to grow in a relationship with the Lord. The answer for Anna Joy is not to be her mama Mandy. 
The answer for her to be Anna Joy, who loves God, who desires to grow. The answer for you is no different than Anna Joy. We're all the same. We're all sinners saved by the marvelous grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, God loves you. God cares for you. The answer is just grow. How? The sincere milk of the word. Go back to 2 Peter chapter 3 and look with me at verse number 18 again. This is awesome. Look at verse number 18. It says, but grow in grace. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Grow in grace. Think about that. Grow in grace. This is an awesome truth. Grow in grace. Grow in your understanding that God loves you. Grow in your understanding that God loves you. He's your friend. He is cheering for you. He wants what's best for you. God is not your enemy. He's not your adversary. He's not somebody to run from, but to run to. And it's saying, hey, grow in grace. Grow in your understanding that God is, wants to walk with you. He wants to talk with you. He wants to commune with you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to walk with you on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. He wants to, to, to you to talk to Him. He wants you to hear from Him from your word. But grow in grace. Grow. Some of you, if you're not careful, you think of God as somebody who hates you. You think of God who, uh, you think of him wrong, you think that God is out to get you. God doesn't hate you. God's not out to get you. Grow in grace and realize God wants what's best for you. By the way, that helps you when you realize that, it'll help you to live by faith because you'll realize, hey, God wants best. I'll trust that his will is better than my will. His way is better than my way. Hey, I'm gonna grow in grace. I'm gonna grow in grace. I'm gonna grow in grace. But then also look at this. It says, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Not only grow in grace, but grow in knowledge. Grow every day in your knowledge of Jesus. Oh, there's so much to know about the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, the Bible tells us in the book of John, the books couldn't even contain all that he has done for you and me. And it's important, grow in grace but also grow in your knowledge of Jesus Christ. Church, we're done. There is an enemy without. And you see it. I see it every day. There is an enemy within, maybe a little bit more subtle. Uh, there's an enemy within. And what do we do? We need to beware. Beware. But the answer to it all is not to be somebody else. The answer is just grow. Just grow. Grow through the Word of God. Grow in grace. Grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Remember Amos? Been up late, late at night lately. He's uh, been up and eating and eating and eating and eating and eating. And by the way, he's growing. And Amos does not need to be one of his brothers. Amos needs to be Amos. And the answer for Amos is the same answer for you. Just grow. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. What a marvelous truth you've given us here in 2 Peter chapter 3. Boy, you read 1 Peter, the book, there is an enemy without. It says a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. But also there's an enemy within, sometimes a subtle enemy, false doctrines. And all we like sheep have gone astray. And boy, those false ways will lead us in a wrong direction subtly and quickly. And you tell us, beware. I pray that a, a husband, a wife, a child, a senior ambassador will think this morning, say, hey, that's for me. I need to beware. How can I handle this? Beware. And then they'll realize the answer is just grow. Help somebody who's struggled recently in their minds thinking, if I was so-and-so, if I was so-and-so, help them to stop that thinking and be thankful for this truth. Probably many this morning are in that just growing. That every day they grow a little bit more closer to you and they're in growing grace and they grow in their knowledge. But help them to continue on that path. And the last thing, Lord, if there's a soul here this morning that's never trusted you as their Savior. Help them to realize their only hope is you, Jesus. Help them even right now realize that they've sinned, 
The price for their sin would be hell, but you paid that price on the old rugged cross. Lord, please bless the invitation. In Jesus' name, amen. If you look at me for a moment, I want you to do business with God. Where piano's going to play, but you could stop, and maybe you're one that knows about growing. You just grow. Say, Lord, help me to continue to grow. Then some of you, some of you, you really need this. Pray right now. Say, God, forgive me for desiring to be somebody else. Lord, help me to be satisfied with my life that you've given me. But Lord, help me to just grow. Whatever it is, do business with God as the piano player plays. You are precious to God. God loves you. God's given you life. He's given you breath. He's given you the ability to grow, desires for you to grow. He's not your enemy. Grow in grace. He's your friend. His way is better than your way. His thoughts are even better than your thoughts. Boy, jump on the Jesus train. It's a good train to be on.